Welcome back, everybody. It is the Working Brother, Wyatt Reed. Another talk. Wyatt, we're all dressed the same. Those keen-eyed among the viewers might realize we recorded this on the same day. Uh, um, no, this is my only shirt, actually. <laughs> me too. What a coincidence. The, the other ones, the other ones all uh, disappeared. No. Seriously speaking, though, uh, we were talking in the last episode, link somewhere, um, about how the Houthi state is basically doing general good. You know, in international the Yemeni law, state. the Yemeni, the Yemeni state. Yeah, that that's a more the Ansar Allah, which is uh, is it the hand of God or the fighters of God? What is it? I should know, uh, but I don't. My Arabic is ru- rusty. <laughs> Mine shouldn't be that rusty, but what can I say? In any case, yeah. And you were saying how they were acting out of general uh, goodness for everyone not just for themselves it means helpers of allah helpers of god helpers of um, god there you go so well yeah i guess the, the point is that that uh though that uh whether or not it's it's a strictly moral stand uh there is a level of of self-interest there for for Yemen, um, for Iran, for example, uh, in the sense that um, the West and particularly Israel are great enemies of these people, of these countries. Um, They have, uh, people in these countries have very little reason to believe that the Israelis or the United States government has uh, their best interests at heart. In fact, you know, if you look at the history of Iran, it's very clear that uh, the United States has spent, um, you know, the, the 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 deep state has spent every waking moment since the 50s uh, coming up with different ways to overthrow the government of Iran, uh, to depose its democratically elected leaders um and to uh steal its oil right so um from their perspective obviously there is there is something to be gained out of having a deterrence factor out of having uh the west kind of finally realize okay you you don't get to just come right to our borders and bomb us in the name of uh you know freedom of navigation uh you who spent the past several years raiding Iranian ships, stealing Venezuelan oil on the high seas because you don't like their government. Uh, you don't get to start a war with us. Uh, Russian propaganda, do, man. Because we Nobody do what stole you did. any oil. R- Russian propaganda, man. I, 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 I'm, I'm ashamed that, that, that you consider yourself American and spew such uh, Russian propaganda. I'm ashamed on behalf of all the Americans that, that don't watch reality. <laughs> this is a comedy show. In case you just got well, this episode, first episode here. Well, Irking brother, the welcome. Hi, is, everyone. <laughs> it's hard to keep it light. It's hard to keep it light while you're talking. To, and this is also my problem of like, even like going out and kind of talking to people like you know in the United States. This is not a light conversation. You can kind of have it in a dark humor, funny way, but. Uh, that requires you know, a certain level of intellect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I understand. <laughs> um, and we're not we're not encouraged to, to go out and understand global affairs. Yeah, uh, and even even the programs ostensibly designed to teach us about global affairs are actually designed to do the opposite. You know, if you ever met, um, you know, students or like like poli sci students or. Um, international affairs students they're some of the most brainwashed morons you'll find on campus um even the business school guys are you know more hey, mentally hey, competent hey, 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 hey. i'm 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 from the business school i'm an economist well, well that explains it <laughs> um but no so i mean the business school guys they understand self-interest right um and the uh, the global affairs kids they they believe in the rules based order, right? You you go and you come out of that program actually genuinely believing 
that you know the United States has like this responsibility to protect. We have this humanitarian <laughs> intervention democracy. thing, and that's just what we do, right? Yeah. yeah, and and they really embrace that stuff. It's it's honestly crazy. So um, I never went to college. That's why I'm not an idiot. <laughs> well, I I wouldn't you know say it's cause and effect but it might have a correlation <laughs> it might have a correlation i got a question for you we talked a bit off camera and we talked when we did our first talk um about tucker carlson and his possible uh you know effect on on the narrative and i just want to play like b-roll in the back of uh tucker carlson in uh, moscow and get your take on uh what is happening and why that's good for everyone except for Biden. And what's her name? Newland? Victor Tory? Uh I'm I'm trying to figure out I'm trying to dissect this footage. What are what exactly are we watching here? This is a a somebody we're, we're watching. filming his car. Somebody like we're paparazzi style filming his vehicle. Yes, this is paparazzi filming uh, Tucker Carlson's vehicle getting picked up, if I'm not mistaken, at the Bolshoi Theater and or his hotel and or being dropped off to Putin's uh, Kremlin. Because it's Putin's Kremlin where the Russians get their commands from. No, seriously speaking, though, um, I've seen two. I don't know which one I downloaded. It's either the one where he's leaving his hotel going to Bolshoi or it's the one where he's leaving uh, Bolshoi and or his hotel and then going to the Kremlin. But the point is he went to the Kremlin. So what's your take on pay-per-view Kremlin interview coming <laughs> soon? <laughs> So is that I, I don't I didn't even hear the latest uh, about it. Is it it's coming out now? I know there's something. On I, I don't know. Media. I'm making a joke. It's a comedy show. But. Oh no! I I, <laughs> I I was like maybe they are. Maybe this is like a ex promotion thing. I don't. So, but uh, no, I'm sure he's having a great time uh, because you know he's he's being treated like he's like this Royalty, mega basically. celebrity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And. Um, and I kind of had not nearly to that extent, but kind of a similar experience just being an American who's mm -hmm. not a total shithead, um, <laughs> you know, especially now there's like a great shortage of Americans. They have no you have no, you know, Americans and Russian to speak of because um, they all mostly went home or weren't able to continue working there or whatever. So. Um, so there's there's a high consumer demand for gringos right now. It's a good good economy to be a gringo in, um, and I'm sure Tucker Carlson is is getting that milking effect that cash cow, huh? Milking the What's cash that? cow, milking yeah. the cash cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I liked what he did when he quit. I liked what he did when he went on uh, Twitter. But okay, recently, oh, so he just posted something. I see that now. He just posted something called "Why I'm Interviewing Vladimir Putin." Came uh -oh. out an hour ago. Dun, dun. It's we're, only we three minutes up... long. Do you want to watch it? We could watch it. <laughs> send send the link. It. Send the link. Okay. Um. So yeah, while everybody is uh, waiting for that link, uh, we can have a preview of. Uh, no, the link is already here. No preview. Um, let's watch it together. Uh, hold on. Let me just get this Twitter window ready. Uh, pause, buddy. Pause, pause. And then we need to zoom in here. Right. And, uh, both plus TV. There we go. Um, Tucker Carlson. Uh, what did you say one minute ago? We're in this Moscow like tonight. We're here to interview the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. We'll be doing that soon. There are risks to conducting an interview like this, obviously. So we thought about it carefully over many months. Here's why we're doing it. First, because it's our job. We're in journalism. Our duty is to inform people. Two years into a war that's reshaping the entire world, most Americans are not informed. They have no real idea what's happening in this region, here in Russia or 600 miles away in Ukraine. But they should know. They're paying for much of it in ways they might not fully yet perceive. The war in Ukraine is a human disaster. 
It's left hundreds of thousands of people dead, an entire generation of young Ukrainians, and it's depopulated the largest country in Europe. But the long-term effects are even more profound. This war has utterly reshaped the global military and trade alliances, and the sanctions that followed have as well. And in total, they have upended the world economy. The post-World War II economic order, the system that guaranteed prosperity in the West for more than 80 years, is coming apart very fast, and along with it, the dominance of the U.S. dollar. These are not small changes. They are history-altering developments. They will define the lives of our grandchildren. Most of the world understands this perfectly well. They can see it. Ask anyone in Asia or the Middle East what the future looks like. And yet the populations of the English-speaking countries seem mostly unaware. They think that as nothing has really changed. And they think that because no one has told them the truth. Their media outlets are corrupt. They lie to their readers and viewers. And they do that mostly by omission. For example, since the day the war in Ukraine began, American media outlets have spoken to scores of people from Ukraine, and they have done scores of interviews with Ukrainian President Zelensky. We ourselves have put in a request for an interview with Zelensky, and we hope he accepts. But the interviews he's already done in the United States are not traditional interviews. They are fawning pep sessions, specifically designed to amplify Zelensky's demand that the U.S. enter more deeply into a war in Eastern Europe and pay for it. That is not journalism. It is government propaganda. Propaganda of the ugliest kind, the kind that kills people. At the same time, our politicians and media outlets have been doing this, promoting a foreign leader like he's a new consumer brand. Not a single Western journalist has bothered to interview the president of the other country involved in this conflict, Vladimir Putin. Most <laughs> Americans have no idea why Putin invaded Ukraine or what his goals are now. They've never heard his voice. That's wrong. Americans have a right to know all they can about a war they're implicated in. And we have the right to tell them about it because we are Americans too. Freedom of speech is our birthright. We were born with the right to say what we believe. That right cannot be taken away no matter who is in the White House. But they're trying anyway. Almost three years ago, the Biden administration illegally spied on our text messages and then leaked the contents to their servants in the news media. They did this in order to stop a Putin interview that we were planning. Last month, we're pretty certain they did exactly the same thing once again. But this time, we came to Moscow anyway. We are not here because we love Vladimir Putin. We are here because we love the United States. And we want it to remain prosperous and free. We paid for this trip ourselves. We took no money from any government or group. Nor are we charging people to see the interview. It is not behind a paywall. Anyone can answer. watch the entire thing, <laughs> shot live to tape and unedited, on our website, TuckerCarlson.com. Elon Musk, to his great credit, has promised not to suppress or block this interview once we post it on his platform, X, and we're grateful for that. Western governments, by contrast, will certainly do their best to censor this video on other less principled platforms because that's what they do. They are afraid of information they can't control. But you have no reason to be afraid of it. We are not <laughs> encouraging you to agree with what Putin may say in this interview but we are urging you to watch it. You should know as much as you can. And then, like a free citizen and not a slave, you can decide for yourself. Ooh, he used the S word. Um, <laughs> well, what can I say? At least he answered me. The interview won't be behind the paywall. That's good. I was going to say yeah. I liked his shit until he started making a paywall, which was like two weeks ago or something. So, so it's good this won't be behind the paywall at least. Yeah, well, this is, um, it's a long time coming. Um, Tucker has been trying to coordinate an interview with Putin for several years, uh, or with, with high-level uh, Russian officials. Uh, the last time he tried to make that happen, uh, the NSA interfered directly uh, with his emails. They spied on him. Uh, in fact, um, uh, this is... Uh, this comes directly from Anya Parampil, my colleague at the Gray Zone, uh, who was the intermediary that um, was seeking to connect Tucker Carlson with um, Sergei Ryabkov, the uh, deputy foreign minister. Um, when they originally tried to coordinate an interview 
um, this was in April, May of 2021, uh, both the Russian diplomat and Tucker Carlson's teams um, uh, were, were uh, or Anya sent an email to both of those uh, emails, right? And the email didn't send. And this was bizarre um, because <laughs> no matter what they did, they were not able to email directly between uh, the Russian diplomat's email and Tucker Carlson's email. <laughs> no matter how many times they tried three or four times, it would not go through. And this was a month or so before a whistleblower in the NSA approached Tucker Carlson, explained to him and asked him, actually, are you planning to interview Vladimir Putin? And Tucker said that he was taken totally aback because he hadn't said anything publicly to anyone about this. Uh, right. This was only known to just a handful of people, one of one of whom was my colleague. And um, as a result of this, uh, Tucker ultimately went on to expose the NSA uh, to note how they were spying on him um, and uh, directly monitoring his efforts to interview uh, the president of Russia, which is a wait, wait, normal wait. interview Be that before you go any, conducted before, before you go any further i just want to put a disclaimer out there just for your safety of mind this is a comedy show nothing to do with the reality <laughs> everything he just said was like free-flowing humor <laughs> do you want to keep telling the joke or are you are you about done the, the, there? <laughs> the joke yeah. yeah this this joke uh can be found on the gray zone um anya parmpil wrote uh, a report uh last march called i am the u.s based kremlin intermediary that tried to help tucker carlson book an interview with putin um and she explained all of this very clearly laid out that lays out the timeline and everything uh but yes uh tucker's tucker's previous attempts to interview putin were directly manipulated directly spied on by the u.s government which evidently did not want that to happen at all uh, the Biden administration clearly had no interest in allowing that to take place. And uh, so Tucker had to go directly to Moscow, it seems, to be able to uh, make this interview happen. Um, and, you know, on behalf of the public, uh, the informed <laughs> public, the public that wants to be informed, I say, you know, uh, I applaud that. I think we need more communication, more information about what people think and why and not less um, I think if you think people deserve less information, then you probably uh, have something to hide. That's uh, one way to look at it. Um, yeah, Tucker doing his thing. I uh, can't disagree with you about um, people needing to know more. Do you play video games? Mm, not a lot. I like, um, you know, uh, like Red Dead Redemption. I like, yeah, I played it. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I played about sixty like, percent. Um, then I had to nice. uninstall it because I had other better games to like Flight Simulator. But yeah, uh, yeah, it takes up like three hundred gigs. It's ridiculous. Yeah, um, yeah. No, it's it's a big, massive game. Oh, uh, which but you pirated it. That's why it took three hundred gigs. No, no. The Flight <laughs> Sim takes three hundred gigs. <laughs> and no, I got everything from Steam, man. Um, okay. Maybe maybe we'll exchange Steam after after this and then yeah, we can yeah. uh, we 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 can do some gaming. Do you play uh, Battlefield at all? Have you ever played Battlefield? I uh, for whatever reason I just never did much like uh, shooter games on the PC. Mm -hmm. um, so I just never got as good at it. So I kind of never did that. But uh, it's, well, it's a good game. Considering you may be out of the loop. Um, there's a game called uh, Battlefield 2044, I think, or 2042. Right. Yeah, so yeah. 2042, I think it is. 2042 it's super is super realistic looking, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. But the point is, 
in this game, the the reality that you're living in is you're no pat, which means non patriot, as in non like you don't have a country. And the only two states as such that exist are Russia and the US and they're in perpetual war and everybody from every other country is just uh, you know, tagging along and picking a side to fight like mercenaries, kinda like you're got in Ukraine now. Um and then I come across this which is how Russia attacks in 2044. And I think, uh, whose is this? Oh, it doesn't say here. Hmm. Uh, the, 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 judging by the graphic, it looks like it's uh, one of those British newspapers, be it the Telegraph or the Mirror or like one of those like the tabloid. Sun. Yeah, the Sun, there you go. Tabloid, uh, tabloid stuff. Um, so AI-controlled tanks invade the Baltic. Yeah. <laughs> Nuclear-armed Iran and North Korea in support, naturally. <laughs> Turkey Turkey goes full NATO. Uh, Ukraine is the... Okay, Ukraine was the in-between one. <laughs> Weird. It, when did it, this game come out? No, this is not a game. This is like an article. Oh, this is from the article. Saying, no, no, oh, this is from the okay, article. Okay. Again, we've got wow. life mirroring the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know so 2044. Mean? Okay. Yeah, that's that's what the article is predicting. Um, and it's funny that you mentioned Ukraine because, like, it's left blank here. I yeah, guess they didn't like, want to spoil anyone's day. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you know? <laughs> like, it might be a nuclear wasteland already. Um, well, I think it's really what it reflects is that any realistic like uh simulation of of what ukraine would look like would look like divided you know probably mm -hmm. not on terms that the west would like right so they're just kind of like yeah we'll just put that one to the side for now eh. <laughs> let's not talk about it <laughs> right exactly um the other thing oh i i have this loaded so i might get it uh, what's your take on this uh, thing and the fact that it oh, survived wow. and I went forgot. back. I forgot. I <laughs> forgot that it exists. <laughs> this the whole the whole Sarah Ashton Cirilla thing feels like a lifetime ago. Honestly, it's like because then this person like I don't know if uh, if they're male again now or I think they certainly I think they stopped are. wearing wigs. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know what happened there. I am not interested enough in their gender transformation to like take stock of that. But um, yeah, that's wild. I can't believe that they are letting this person continue doing this. I mean, at the end there, it was just like, <clears throat> you remember they were posting um, uh they got they got pranked by Vivon and Lexus, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then and then they tried to play it off um, as a deep fake, right? They tried to say, first, "I'm not yeah, the person in first, this video. Yeah. I've you know this is a deep fake. It's not me. This is an AI simulation or something." Mm -hmm. And then they deleted that within like two minutes of posting it. And I thought that was it. I thought that was the end for. Sarah Ashton Cirillo, um, and it kind of was because the trans identity thing seemed to disappear, but uh, <laughs> somehow they're just still around and uh, apparently considered to be reputable and worth interviewing. And yeah, I mean, we're still, it's like living in the twilight zone. It's like, it's worse than the Twilight people, Zone, man. It's worse than the Twilight Zone. Because none of these people are ever going to take a reputational hit for being wrong about everything all the time, right? It's just... <laughs> everything all the time. Um, <laughs> being wrong about everything all the time uh, smoothly transitions into our next subject. Uh, I don't know if you heard. You know who this is, right? Oh. Uh, so are you, are you, yeah. You you know who Strelkov is? Yeah, yeah, he's in jail, right? Yeah, he's currently in jail, and there's rumors that he's gonna lead the, the penal battalion. <laughs> is that real? Yeah, that's real. This that's is from a real his lawyer. Rumor? 
from his lawyer. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. So the point is, so the okay. point is, if 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 that happens, how much of everything that Strelkov is as a personality and so on and so forth and all the shit that he's been taking for the past eight years and or now ten years and like everything else, how much of all of that do you think is like you know? Maskirovka and GRU playing with people's emotions and weeding out the like you know uh, dissenters and so on and so forth. Well, you have to wonder, but it's just there's no way. It's like the Prigozhin thing. We'll we'll never know. We will never know, right? We just have no idea. And the only people who could tell us are almost all dead. And or not going to talk. Yeah. <laughs> or not. We're absolutely not going to talk, and certainly not to like a journalist. Um, mm. so, I mean, it's just like, we can talk about it, but there are maybe three people who know, yeah. and none of them are going to tell us. <laughs> like, so, I mean, uh, it, it uh, is I'm... fun to talk about, but, um, uh, I mean, I don't really know enough of the specifics of the case. I do know that a lot, a lot of the hardcore Russian, Russian nationalist kind of battalion was very up in arms over his treatment um obviously it is not uh from a russian perspective good to have him kind of second guessing everything that the military does um but uh yeah i mean now that if if if, if he's actually going to go back and it's, i mean it's just like prigozhin right it's just the same exact kind of dynamic where just uh, you don't know, and you know, the guys involved are absolutely not going to tell you. And uh, yeah, the handful of people that know just just will never know, probably. All right, I want to take a second to thank everybody who's uh, subscribed. I want to take a second to thank everybody who's uh, bought me a coffee. Look, we even got this little banner thing here. Woohoo, buy me a coffee. Bye bye. I want to um, take a second to thank everyone who didn't, because that, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not getting any coffees out of this, you know what, so. Uh, <laughs> hey, what can I say? If if you find the <laughs> donate button on, on Gray Zone's website, go donate there. <laughs> um, I'll leave a link. He'll send me a link later. Um, the link will be in the description if he sends it. Um, in any case. Uh, yeah, so I was going to thank all of you guys for sticking around, and I want to get your opinion, if you've been sticking around this far, uh, 27 minutes in, uh, do you like the shorter format, 20-ish minutes, or do you prefer the longer format, one hour plus, uh, leave a comment in the, the uh, uh, down below somewhere, um, one more meme to draw out the whole, uh, talk, the independent. Serbia advises citizens to avoid traveling to UK due to major political chaos. Um, National Meme Coordination Body uh, approves this uh, message <laughs> and sees it as an absolute win. Um, Amazing. <laughs> Good for them. Good for them. I don't know what to say. Uh, Wyatt, is there anything you'd like to bring attention to after these uh, three episodes that I might have not mentioned or that you may have uh, forgot? Check me out on the Gray Zone. I have a new piece up. Uh, the headline is author of debunked New York Times Hamas rape report to share stage with Hillary Clinton. Uh, we have a new piece out on Jeffrey Gettleman who authored this widely discredited uh, piece alleging that there was widespread rape by Hamas. Uh, we comprehensively debunked that report. We showed definitively that uh, there is no proof that a single one of the episodes, incidents he claimed actually happened. Uh, not, there is not any proof, uh, uh, direct proof of any sexual assault occurring, uh, being carried out by a Hamas member. Uh, that we have seen so far. Um, and yet, nonetheless, uh, that doesn't matter. The facts are relevant. He's going to be uh, speaking uh, alongside Hillary Clinton and a number, number of other high-profile State Department functionaries uh, here in just a few days, February 9th. Um, so uh, that's, uh, you know, obviously Hillary Clinton 
by the way, uh, her very publicly embraced the false, very false claims that uh, Libyan President Muammar Gaddafi was distributing Viagra to his troops to carry out mass rape. Uh, so that's kind of the standard we have for evidence. Um, it doesn't matter that it's fake. They're going to trot it out and use it to manufacture consent for Israeli genocide anyway. Uh, Truth so check and out facts, FD. man. Truth and facts, man. What are you, like a Russian propagandist? Like, who pays you? Is it the Kremlin? Is that why you were saying that it's a good thing for, for what's-his-face, Tucker, to go see them? Like, come on, man. Truth and facts. Where do you live? We live in a post-truth world. <laughs> I, wish I, I wish that the Russians were paying me, but they're not. <laughs> They're, They're not, not paying me either. They're not paying me no. either. It would be interesting. Let's put it that way. In any case. No, we do we do actually have a policy at the Rays on not taking any government money. Um, so we are entirely independent, totally funded by readers and supporters. Um, that can be include you. You at home watching. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Same thing here, except the the pool of support is a uh, puddle <laughs> that you can't even like dip your toe yeah, in fully i'm not trying to steal um, your pool bro you can have no no I, I i i just I wanted to take so. a lap or two I, I i didn't think so either but the point is the point is yeah I, I i'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart and out of my pocket and like some people gave me enough for like literally coffees and i thank them very yeah. much it's it's a drop in the bucket but it does build up over time um well, support the working brother instead of me then uh <laughs> i am good i'm taken care of buy him a coffee and uh don't tell me about it I'll get all jealous. right excellent Wyatt, um, I've already asked you, is there anything else you have to say? Um, is there anybody you'd like to give a shout out to? Anything you want to mention again before we call this a talk? Shout out to Vladimir Zelensky and Bibi Netanyahu, <laughs> my ride or die day one dudes. Um, so, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> no comment. Um, <laughs> Chairman Mao, Kim Jong Un, <laughs> and, and the crew. In any case, and all the right. Rest. Uh, I'm gonna play some music. We've had enough. The viewers have probably had enough. Why? Thank you again for coming on. It's been excellent. But all three episodes. We'll talk to you again soon. And uh, everybody, have a good day. See you soon.